We've had these moments, and we've already had them this year, but we, f- we just forget so quick. And whenever you're an analyst and you're breaking down a fight, it's very hard to talk to people about the intangibles because the intangibles is what is truly most important and truly most relevant and truly most applicable when you're going to part with your money at some kind of a betting window and make that wager. But it's also rhetorically difficult to get people to understand. I say this as a sports commentator. I have a very hard time. I need to breathe a little bit. I need to explain and expand a little bit to touch on the intangibles. Generally, we will just break it down in the most simplistic of terms, which is if Khabib can take him down, he's going to win. And if uh, if Connor can catch him with that left hand, he's going to win. It doesn't seem to matter how many times they set that cage up or how many fights, big, small, medium, somewhere in between. That lucky punch and that striker's chance comes around about every 10 years. But because it comes around every 10 years, we must disclose it and we must talk about it each and every time. Khabib versus Connor, physically, is a fight that we have already seen twice this year. The first time we saw it, it was called Engano versus Stipe. And the next time we saw it, it was called Till versus Woodley. Okay. Those big strikes didn't land, and the outcome was exactly the same, and it was done physically the exact same way. Get close, get a hold of your opponent, get him down. We're seeing that yet again, physically speaking, with this whole striker versus grappler, and the people that say it's going to be Khabib because he's going to take him down and beat him up. And for the people that say it's Connor you know, because he can't he can't take him down and he's going to get caught with that left hand. But we've just seen it two other times already this year. And I don't offer to you today to influence you that Khabib is going to go over and and run over Connor. I would just offer you that there are intangibles, okay? First off this myth of wrestling and you're hearing this from a wrestler Wrestling has very little to do with mixed martial arts anymore. There was a time when it did. There was a time when if you could tackle a guy, you'd be able to keep him there. And then you'd just be able to figure out on your own, in the heat of the moment, where to strike him. Now it is an absolute art because the guys don't stay down anymore. They're not out of their element. They're comfortable there. They train there every day. Some guys would rather be in that position if you could even imagine. So when to strike them is relevant, but once you've taken them down, the wrestling ends. Neither in the Olympic Games for Olympic-style wrestling or in the NCAA for collegiate-style wrestling. Are you allowed to lay on your back or punch or elbow or try to dislocate or extend or strangle your opponent? Wrestlers will have you believe that it's still wrestling, but it's not. That is a new sport, and that sport is called grappling. If you begin striking, that is yet another sport, and that sport is called mixed martial arts. So while Connor may not not be able to wrestle with Khabib, okay, he's not going to have to if he can get up off the bottom. And so many times I've heard about this deficit in Connor's wrestling ability because of the matchup he had with Chad Mendez. But if you would go back and watch that tape, and before you come and share your opinion with somebody— Watch another 15 seconds of that exchange, and you will see Connor get up off the bottom. So it is now irrelevant. And there is a tired Chad Mendez who just used a lot of energy to get him down, who was not able to secure the position. And now he's stuck back up on his feet, but those are intangibles. It's not just a compliment to Connor, it's not an insult to Chad. It's just a reality of what happened in that fight. But so many people that want to cheer against Connor will use that as their evidence. Another intangible is getting up from Khabib from my living room where I'm watching looks like a really hard thing to do. Khabib is doing stuff on top. Musousi would get credit also. I can tell you this as a guy who likes to ground and pound. They are doing things and I'm learning. Khabib is a master of trapping you there. 
And there's some things that are happening that I don't think you guys are seeing from your television sets. I wouldn't see him if I hadn't been involved in this sport and loved that position myself. But he is doing things where he is trapping the legs. He's figure fouring one leg, at least. He's looking for two legs, at least. He will then sit back on his haunches, putting all his weight down on those trap legs. Now you can't move. Your legs are beat, but his hands are free, and he starts swinging. Barboza is one of the, you know, I I always hear Khabib can't stop fights. Hey, they could have stopped that Barboza fight anytime they wanted. There was two 10-8 rounds. The referee would have had any kind of heart for Barboza, or if Barboza's cornerman would have had any kind of heart, or if Barboza himself had any kind of a lack of heart, that fight was a TKO. There's other examples that I could offer you, but it is a mauling when Khabib gets on top. It's an absolute mauling. The bad news is, He's been shooting single legs lately. Single legs don't work in MMA. They just simply don't. And a lot of those were air balls. Al Iaquinas, see that fight. I mean, Al got out of a a lot of them. Khabib kept throwing them, and and a lot of them worked as well. Chris Weidman shoots a single leg successfully. And I think the music stops there. I would have a very hard time offering you one other meaningful fighter that can go to a single leg and have success. A single leg in wrestling can be a very good thing. In mixed martial arts, with the absence of a shoe for friction, that guy's leg just comes out. It just simply doesn't work. Weidman's found a way to do it. Randy Couture used to do a bit of a single leg. He would control it way up high in the hips and the crotch area when he was at heavyweight, but he he could use that and pick those guys all the way up off the mat and slam them down. It's just very rare. I mean, those are the examples i got to give you. Randy hasn't been in the ring in 15 years. i got to go back that far. It's just not the best weapon. When Khabib gets to the body, when he uses a single leg to get in close and releases and comes around the body, he's a handful. I haven't seen guys slipping and and pulling out of that. But there are some intangibles. There are things that have to be looked at. The calmness of Conor McGregor is something that is never given enough credit or spoken highly enough about. But when he comes out there you know, against Eddie Alvarez in a 17-plus million-dollar gate, a champion of one division, getting ready to pursue a championship in another division. He's the one they're all there to see. First time at Madison Square Garden, he hits the billionaire strut. He doesn't give a damn that he's got a fist fight in front of him in a steel cage against the greatest guy in the world, in Eddie Alvarez, who's got the gold belt to prove it and put it on the line that night. Those are things that very rarely come along with athletes. Most athletes feel a lot of anxiety and a nervousness. It can affect their approach. It can perfect their performance. Some will have ways to deal with that and overcome and get through it, but they're feeling it anyway. I can't offer you that Khabib is going to go out and lock up and freeze, but that is why it's an intangible. I don't know that he won't. I have seen nothing in his past that says that he will, but he's also only been the main event one time. He's walked out last one time. He has never been in the biggest fight in mixed martial arts history. No one has. It's a first time. So there's some real newnesses there. And, you know, when you want to talk about pressure, yeah, Khabib's feeling a lot of it. Look, make no mistake, Conor McGregor wakes up on October 6th, the biggest star in the company. No matter what happens in the cage that night, Conor McGregor walks wakes up October 7th, the biggest star in the company. The same cannot be said for Khabib. Khabib's fall will be dramatic and drastic. He may never get back to that spot, which greatly affects his pay. If he doesn't leave there with the belt, his big paydays are over. There is a pressure to that. That is an intangible. Can he deal with it? I got no reason to believe that he can't. But it's a fair talking point. And it's a better talking point than if they're standing up, Connor's winning, and if they're on the ground, Khabib's winning. That's just simply not true. That was the same storyline that we went into Stipe versus Cormier with. For Cormier to win, he has to out-wrestle him, and for Stipe to win, he has to out-punch him. We just don't see it. It's just a default button that no matter how many times we're confronted with, and Gano versus Stipe... Or Till versus Woodley, no matter how many times we're shown, we t- we tend to have short-term memories and we just fall back in for it. 
And in many ways, we could come out of this fight with Khabib absolutely mauling the striker. You're striking fans all over the world. Still trying to get people to sign up for their gym and say, well, if he would have done this different or if he would have turned his feet different or if he would have or, – or they can just accept the fact that, look, a, a puncher's chance comes along every now and then. It's a very real thing. It's a very good tool to have. But it comes along every now and then. Guys get caught. That does happen. But it is sure infrequent. We even see it in boxing. You could go back and give the example or two of where a guy went down. You can tell me forever that that, that, that George Foreman knocked out Michael Moore. But if you got to go back 20 years to offer an example, perhaps there's a better way and a better data pool to look at when you want high percentage skills and when you want to be able to identify who has the lower risk, higher percentage. But we don't want any of this to go away. We want to always be able to talk about it. We want to always be able to have fun with it. The false narratives that are floating around that if this fight is standing up, it, it, Connor's in control. That just simply isn't true. I do believe that Connor is a superior striker. I don't think he could prove it any clearer than with what he did with Floyd Mayweather. But there's also a narrative that Khabib doesn't have good striking. I would counter you with that by reminding you. If Khabib is taking his hands, closing them up into fists, and running them in forward directions and hitting his opponents about the head, neck, chest, and face, while deflecting his opponent's ability to punch him about the head, chest, neck, and face, that's good striking. Somewhere a narrative came about that Khabib did not have good striking. If I can hit you... And you can't hit me. That is the name of the game. And you could talk about all your boxing and all your kickboxing and all your Muay Thai and all your karate and all your awards and your trophies and your medals and your golden gloves until the cows come home. If I hit you and you don't hit me, I'm a better striker than you. So where the narrative came, and Khabib is not Mr. Dynamic. He is not going to come out there and hit spinning wheel kicks. That's true. He's pretty straightforward. You're going to see a kick every now and then. You're going to see a lot of lots of punches and crosses. Stipe fights the same way. Didn't stop him. Daniel Cormier fights the same way. Didn't stop him. So I'm just offering to you that when you do see a guy that's less dynamic, there seems to be a default button where we then draw the conclusion that he's less skilled. Khabib has yet to lose a round, and that includes the rounds where he chose to stand up and the narrative that he was an amateur on his feet derived from. But he still won the round. It's like when you have to hear people talk about what an effective strike is. An effective strike is one that lands. That's it. A good punch is one that lands. A good punch where you hit your target is one that landed. That's it. But I will offer you the same thing for Connor. If Connor is on the ground and he can pop back to his feet, if he can adjust his hips, if he can get his underhooks, if he can protect himself, or if he can start to set up a submission game that we've yet to see from him but doesn't mean it doesn't exist, then we need to be open to the fact that Connor is winning those moments and those positions. And guys, the reason we have to be open to it is because the three people that are going to judge this fight are just like us. They're just regular guys, and they went down and they got the right to judge this fight. We cannot have those judges influenced going in that, oh, if the fight's standing up, I guess Connor's winning. Oh, and if the fight's on the ground more times than it's standing up, I guess Khabib's winning. No, it does not work that way. These narratives are false. Call what you see and have an open mind. I think we can levelly expect that from the judges. I, I think we will get that. But if we expect that of the judges and we're all sitting back as fans who are also judging the fights with our buddies in the living room, make sure you're looking for that. Make sure you're looking for that. Cormier just reminded us, you don't have to be the better striker. You don't have to have had more knockouts than your opponent. And an effective punch is whatever punch lands, particularly when it's on the guy's face, particularly when it's on the guy's temple and the guy's jaw. Don't forget that. 
I do not buy into the narrative that Connor has conditioning issues. It's very hard for me to argue that that's a false narrative when that was created by Connor himself. But I do still argue it because I do not think Connor was in a fair position to adequately assess his own skills. I don't. And that sounds a little weird to say it, but I, I feel like I offer you guys a pretty good example when I tell you the first time he said it, which is, it was against Nate Diaz. He was up two weight classes, guys. He had never fought higher than 145 pounds. He bypassed 155 pounds and went straight up to 170. Bulked up, looked slow. 169 pounds, 24 pounds more than he ever weighed in at before. I mean, if another fighter did that, some boxer did that or something like that, 24 pounds heavier, oh, he'd get crushed. The media would crush him. His trainers would get crushed. The book would go against him. For some reason, that was expected of Connor, and he expected it of himself. And he landed those big shots on a guy who was coming in there about 185, and the shots just didn't hurt as bad. And Nate's still coming at him, and I don't know that it was fair for Connor to assess his conditioning as much as, I'm up two weight classes. I hadn't adjusted to it. I hadn't been in there before. I didn't know what to expect. Put my foot down on the gas. I emptied the tank. There was nothing left. I think the same thing goes for when he fought Floyd. He said the same thing about Floyd. I got tired. I was getting tired. I was having a hard time defending myself and attacking him. People say, ah, he's got conditioning issues. My, My goodness, he just went 30 minutes and never fell down and won a whole bunch of rounds regardless what those crooked judges said. Won a whole bunch of rounds. And then, yeah, he eventually ran out of energy. Sure he did. That doesn't mean he has conditioning issues. It may mean he's not conditioned for a 12-round boxing contest, of which he had zero experience. With that said, and with everything that I just laid out for you, I think another intangible is the conditioning, and I do think that the pace favors Khabib. I just don't think it favors Khabib because Connor has a weakness there. I don't think so. I think it's a Khabib strength. I think that pace and that ability is a big strength. There's ways to take gas out of the tank. Those are called body shots. And while everybody else is worried about the left hand of Connor, and I think it's a fair thing to bring up, but I think that Khabib's got a weakness, which is he keeps his chin up way too high and his hands way too low. He could fix that right now, not even one day in training. He could put his chin down and put his hands up. Doesn't even need to practice it. For some reason, 26 fights later, he just doesn't do it. So we're not going to expect him to do it this weekend. Tomorrow. Don't have to expect him to do it tomorrow. But he does know that left hand is coming. He is planning to come right underneath it and set up his shot. He is planning to circle away from it. I think a better narrative is those teeps. The teep, for anybody that doesn't know that, that just means a, it, when Connor brings his leg straight, not in an arcing motion, he would have to arc it a little bit to go to the leg. He'd have to arc it a little bit to go to the head. When he comes to the body and he plants his toe right in the gut, that is how you put a hole in the gas tank. And that shot is very hard to see. I can just tell you as a fighter, it's very hard to see something that comes straight. Which is why your coaches will always tell you straight punches, straight punches, straight punches. Not only do they get there faster, which is true, but they're just really hard to see. It's not how the human eye works. We see stuff coming out from angles. It's a depth perception issue when it's coming straight at you. And that's one reason why that technique is so effective and Connor is so good at it. If you give a guy like a wrestler a leg in an arcing motion, including kicking him in the leg, boom, he's going to see that. He's going to change elevation. He's going to put his head in your chest. He's going to he's going to catch it and run you over. He, a wrestler would love for you to throw kicks at him, but not the teep. The teep's a little bit different. That will keep a wrestler at bay. There is no ability for Khabib to just catch that foot. He's got to have to block that. The other ones he can catch and use for his takedown, not one straight up the middle. It's not a takedown off of that. I think that will be a more effective tool of Connor. And if you want to talk about the cardio and making that an issue, Connor can start to put holes in that gas tank very early. And why it is true that 80% of fights end up on the ground, it is also true 100% of fights start standing up. So Connor will have that ability. And if Khabib tries to shoot 
outside of an arm's reach, which means he's outside of a leg's reach, he's not going to get it. No wrestler is. you got to step into that pocket. You have to get in there close. So Connor will have those abilities. If he goes for the left, it's hit or miss. He may connect and have a great night, but Khabib is going to be ready for that. When he comes for those teeps, should he do that, that's something that's going to pay off in later rounds. Dividends. He can stick a hole in that gas tank. 